Okay, so thank you very much for coming today. Uh, my name is Ahmad Mardiansha, and then uh, in this webinar, we'll be talking about the uh, wireless technology uh, with Ubiquiti AirMax. Okay, uh, I'm from GLC Networks from Indonesia. Okay, uh, about the agenda today, uh, there will be introductions, wireless fundamentals. Uh, for some of you already know um, about the uh, wireless uh, knowledge, uh, this could be uh, just a refreshment. Okay. Uh, for those who are new, I think uh, you need to understand the uh, some parameters here. And then after we discuss the wireless fundamental, we just review it. And then we'll be discussing Ubiquiti and AirMax, and then some demo if time permits, and then if the bandwidth is possible. <laughs> of course, if you have a question and answer, you can uh, ask it. Okay, what is GLC? GLC is Gardanitas Chakrawala. Uh, that is our website, www.glcnetworks.com. Uh, we are based in Bandung, Indonesia. Our area, our focusing area is... Uh, uh, training and IT consulting. We are Microtech uh, certified uh, partner, and then Ubiquiti and Red Hat as well. Uh, about the webinar itself, uh, we start our first webinar since 2010. At the time, YouTube was uh, not very common. <laughs> uh, we uh, make our webinar here is just a sharing event for uh, various topic yeah so we discuss like Linux uh, networking uh, wireless database many many topics uh, we try as much as possible to make it regular so every two weeks there will be a webinar and then irregular schedule we schedule it as needed Okay, you can check the schedules on our website www.glcnetworks.com slash main slash schedule and if you want to be a presenter okay just feel free to do so um, we are really welcome right so about myself my name is Ahmad uh, I was based I'm based in Bandung I was uh, I'm a Linux user since 1999 a Microtech users 2007 Ubiquiti user since 2011. I'm um, a certified trainer for Microtech, Ubiquiti, and Red Hat. A uh, certified consultant as well. Previously working as a telco engineer, sysadmin, programmer, and then teaching in a university. That is my, here's my uh, uh, website. And then for more info, you can contact me on LinkedIn. Right, so. I think uh, I can see some of uh, new uh, comer here. Can you please tell me from where you are? Okay, I can see some of you are not from Indonesia. Okay, can you please tell me a little bit about yourself? I mean, uh, how far you already know about Ubiquiti, about the topic that we are discussing today. Okay, so uh, I can see here uh, attendees uh, named Daryl, Daryl Balukos, okay. Thank you, Daryl, for your um, chat here. Okay, you're from Philippines, okay. Yeah, I can see I have many colleagues from Philippines. They are using uh, Ubiquiti and Microtech as well. So, and I think uh, that uh, Microtech and Ubiquiti is very popular in the, in, uh, Philipp in Philippines. Okay, next is Faisal Ichal, Ichal okay, from Medan. Medan is in Indonesia. And then uh, I see here Jiha Joroge, okay, from Kenya. Thank you very much for coming, yeah? Okay, anyone? Okay, uh, let's continue. Ah, okay, let's discuss about wireless. Uh, I'll be talking about the wireless uh, fundamentals here. So for those who are already new about the... Uh, topics and then you can think it, this is as a refreshment. So first is wired communication. So before we talk about uh, wireless, 
you talk about wired. So wired means we use physical media to connect TX and RX. TX means transmitter, RX means receiver. So we use usually we use metal as a media and then with the various kinds of metal we use copper. Why copper? Because the uh, conductivity is good okay and then the price is cheap well we can use gold yes gold as the media but uh, I don't I don't think it can last long okay people will steal it <laughs> uh, so copper copper is the most common media for uh, wired communications uh, because it's cheap uh, the next common uh, medium is the glass for example fiber optic is getting cheaper and cheaper uh, by the time goes uh, we usually generally we use two cables so one cable for TX one cable for RX okay so if we use uh, fiber optic cables generally okay generally we use two cables so one for TX one for RX so two uh, cables so the data must travel inside the medium but unfortunately using cables it's not flexible we cannot move devices very easily or too far okay because we are bounded by the uh, length of the uh, cable itself uh, we have uh, faster data rate of course yeah uh, wired communication is very very fast okay and no one can beat the speed of light okay in this case uh, when we use fiber optic and then it is very stable connection so very low low error rate so for example when you, uh, in 1 million or 2 million or 10 million packets only one packet is error okay so you can see it's very very low so cable communication is, is very very stable next but unfortunately we have drawback of uh, wired communication because inflexible okay uh, yeah, we cannot hang around when we do communications or if we use wired okay so that's why we invent the wireless communication so wireless means the communication without physical connection between TX and RX so no wire at all so uh, it makes user more flexible and portable okay because it has no wire it is easy very easy to deploy and then because we use wireless connections how does the uh, packet goes so the traffic the, the, the packet goes uh, the data travel goes to uh, free space okay so free space between the TX and RX so there's a preface in between so the data travels there so uh, so because uh, the data travel over a free, uh, free space we need to have a very common standard for communications okay so we we need to understand how wireless net uh, wireless communication works because uh, the data travel over the free space so that can be happens in many parts so one part is just go straight to tx and rx and go to a straight line sometimes the data travels with the reflection or any other purpose any other um, yeah I mean uh, that depends on what happens between TX and RX if there is a reflections or there is a um, uh, for example attenuation between them and then that will uh, um, make some things on the signal we will discuss the the things that going on uh, that is happens to the signals in the next slide okay uh, next is if you use wires wireless communication it is slower okay and then you have to understand that uh, wireless communication is not uh, full duplex we will we'll be discussing about the simplex and duplex in the next slide so one thing you need to remember that uh, wireless communication is flexible okay but uh, you need to understand how it works and then uh, it is slower okay and then it, it 
Uh, the way it communicates can be affected by many things. It's not not that stable. Okay, I have I forgot to put one thing here. It's not stable. But usually in my room, usually the connection is stable. Okay, that's in your place. But it's not happens all the time. Okay. So simplex versus duplex. So simplex means one way communications. For example, broadcast, TV, radio, uh, streaming, YouTube streaming. So those are uh, example of simplex communication. Duplex means uh, two way communications. Okay, so it means that TX and RX can exchange data. Okay, so duplex itself is divided into two types. First is full duplex, where the TX and RX exchanging data in the same time. Uh, for example, telephone, switch network, okay. Uh, if you use uh, UTP cables, and then, uh, yeah, you have the full duplex communication. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, next is half duplex, means TX and RX takes turn when they exchanging the data. For example, if you have a handy talkie or walkie talkie, a Wi-Fi, okay, so if you use Wi-Fi connection, actually it's not full duplex, it's half duplex, yeah, okay. And then if you use, still use hub network instead of switch, and then that one is still uh, half duplex. Right, okay, so some words basic knowledge. First, you need to understand about wave. So wave is a um, phenomenon that is, okay, I will turn off the camera here because I think the bandwidth is not enough to to uh, accommodate the, yeah, to co accommodate the pictures. Okay, uh, wave. So wave is something that is produced by oscillations of uh, materials. Okay, so for example, when you speak and then you are producing a wave, when you hit a drum, you're producing a wave. So when we talk about wave, there are several parameters, there are several properties that we need to understand. So first, wave must have a frequency, a wave must have a lambda, a wave must have a period. Okay, wave also have, must have a amplitude. So amplitude is means how far is the signal goes. Okay, for example, you can see on the picture here, so that's the amplitude. And then we have uh, lambda, okay, how long is one uh, one wave, okay. And then in this case, what kind of wave we are using in, in wireless communication here. So here we use electromagnetic wave for communication, okay. So we are not using human voice for communication yeah, human voice is, is wireless yes you are, you are correct but uh, in order to uh, the, but the, the, the wireless technology the wireless wave that is used by your phone your laptop is electromagnetic wave so why why is it called electromagnetic wave because it is generated from electro electricity and magnetism uh, principle so electric electricity generates magnetism magnetism can generate electricity so we combine them and then we can produce electromagnetic wave okay so electromagnetic wave we do the oscillation of this wave so after this oscillations and then the wave will uh, be uh, radiated through the air, through the free space, okay? And then we need to understand how this uh, radiomagnetic wave works so that on the receiver will understand what the transmitter means. Okay, so transmitter generating this electromagnetic wave and then the receiver, the RX, need to understand that, all right? So, yeah, that's what happened. So, uh, uh, we use uh, usually or uh, when we in in cable communication in wired communication we use cable to distinguish uh, one communication to the other communication right but in wireless uh, we just use uh, frequency to distinguish communication 
okay so we use this frequency frequency one frequency two frequency three to distinguish the communication so sometimes we use frequency sometimes we use term channel okay channel or frequency is sometimes is used interchangeable so uh, some communication requires wider frequency okay to be used so it's called the divide of the frequency use is called channel width or bandwidth so if you use a radio fm radio for example that is operating on 100 megahertz so that one is only operating on 100 megahertz only so if you turn your radio to 101 you cannot hear them because they are using very very narrow okay very narrow uh, frequency okay so 100 megahertz is called center frequency and then the total channel that is used during the communication is called the uh, bandwidth okay so the protocol will specify the frequency or channel width that could be used in communication okay so channel width and interference so interference is a phenomenon where two waves superpose to form a result of a wave or greater or lower or the same amplitude so as you can see in the picture here so interfere can be constructive okay for example on the left or on the um, left picture here on the red okay so that one is constructive there are two wave okay they are joining together and then on the above is the result Okay, so they are they are they are constructive. Uh, the signal become more stronger. On the right here is the destructive. So the signal from the first source and signal from second source they are joining together, and then the result is signal is destroyed. Okay, so as you can see, uh, in two point four gigahertz band. So as you can see on the picture here on the left okay uh, bottom left so we have three bands 900 megahertz band 2.4 gigahertz band and then 5.8 gigahertz band if you zoom this 2.4 gigahertz band you can see uh, channel 1 2 3 4 up to channel 14 yes and then channel 2412 is 2412 megahertz okay but when we use channel 1, it's not only we use 2412 megahertz only. So actually it started from 2401, okay, 2.4 uh, gigahertz, uh, two, uh, 2401 megahertz up to 2423 megahertz. So that long, okay, that wide. So uh, the distance between 2423 minus 2401 is 22 megahertz okay so that's the channel width of uh, our technology here Wi-Fi okay so uh, we use Wi-Fi uh, Wi-Fi is defined by IEEE uh, 882.11 okay and then that standard defines that uh, the channel width that we are using in this technology is 20 megahertz okay so what happened if if there are two access point in our room one is using channel one the other is using channel two and then there will be an interference okay because they are closing to each other so they are they are using uh, so th they are we, we call it overlap okay some of the range are overlap and then because they are overlap they will do interference and then interference is not good because they will destroy the signal so what happened if you don't want to interfere you don't want to have an interference and then you can use channel 1 and then you can use channel 6 and then you can use channel 11 okay 1 6 11 okay those are the channel that you can reuse in your network but sometimes not like that as you can see on uh, bottom right picture here so 
you can see channel 1 up to channel uh, 12 okay but people are not using the pattern 1 6 and 11 people just use any channel they like maybe because they don't understand or maybe other reason okay so that's happened so in that network the the possibility of having interference is very very high okay and the signal is not that good all right so let's continue with ubiquity so ubiquity is a network devices manufacturer based in usa uh, if i'm not mistaken the headquarters in san jose uh, in california yeah uh, they have product groups. They ha they have lots of uh, product name products. Uh, but uh, to to make it e to to make us easier to understand is uh, they have several product groups. For example, here, Airmax. Airmax is a product group for wireless backbone. Okay, so if you want to have a point to point or a point to multi point uh, backbone, and then you can use uh, Airmax. And then they have uh, Unify. Okay, Unify is for is is a product group for enterprise solution. If you have a yeah, enterprise means a company. Uh, it's a solution for a company for a big organization. Okay, for example, if you have a campus or a big uh, you know big company that has lots of uh, buildings, lots of uh, rooms. Okay, uh, you can. Uh, use a solution from uh, ubiquity uh, unify uh, for example the here is they also provide wireless okay wireless access point uh, they also provide cctv and iphone uh, you mean i mean ip phone sorry not iphone okay so i need to <laughs> uh, modify this one so this is not iphone okay ip phone okay ip based phone so uh <laughs> Also, they have uh, Edge Max. Uh, this is for wired communication. So they also produce switches, routers. Okay. Uh, also, they have uh, Air Fiber. Actually, I think Air Fiber, in my opinion, is a part of Air Max. Yeah, it's for high capacity backhaul. Uh, if you want to pump data over the air, for example, up to 700 megabit per second. Okay, I repeat, seven 700 megabit per second you can use this one air fiber uh, for long haul for example 30 kilometers using a wireless you can use air fiber as well and then they also have a solar max it's for a solar panel well the thing is oh okay air max unify blah 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 up to air fiber all of them are for uh, network yes but this one is a little bit different solar max <laughs> yeah solar max means that they also produce a solar panel okay so the thing is when you have a very large uh, um, a distance and then usually you have to put the repeater in between and then sometimes the the the, the place uh, where you put the equipment is not always back up by electricity so that one you can use solution from solar max okay so about air max yeah so uh, here i put uh, some screenshot about air max okay so air max uh, if you already install air max uh, as you can see you can log in here okay on the uh, picture top left Okay, after you log in and then you can see picture on the top right here so that's the IP address for example and then it will display the dashboard the device model device name memory uh, network name CPU and so on and so forth the airtime uptime a LAN speed and then uh, a cable link it can detect after that uh, it can display the wireless okay so wireless mode can be uh, AP or uh, client AP PTP PTP means point to point okay AP means so this device is used as access point so uh, when you set up my um, wireless 
uh, there are two types you want to set up as access point or you want to set up as a client a client that connects to access point okay so in wired uh, co communication usually we call it uh, server and client uh, but in wireless we don't use server and client we use access point and station access point is called AP station is called STA okay so uh, here is the SSID okay security we use uh, WPA uh, distance uh, it will calculate the distance automatically uh, connection time frequency TX rate TX power and uh, RX signal okay and then here uh, also we can uh, see the throughput okay when you click the throughput uh, it will display the real throughput that is uh, happening on the wireless interface okay so here's the constellation diagram uh, that uh, give you um, um, information about the modulation that is used on uh, wireless communication uh, we haven't discussed about the modulation okay I'm really sorry for that uh, and you can see here we you can see a signal and then noise and then interference okay so the blue here the blue is uh, average signal okay average signal you get from from communication during communications and then on the orange here is the interference plus noise yeah uh, so that equals to minus 87 dBm okay so which is quite high and then noise floor here is minus 94 dBm okay so that one means uh, yeah usually uh, if there are several uh, wireless devices around the uh, device usually uh, the noise floor is uh, getting higher right so uh, if there is no is, is if the place is very very quiet the noise floor can be minus 100 okay minus 100 here is higher so the less minus okay so that one was minus 100 but this one as you can see on the slide is minus 94 it means that less less minus means uh, it's more noises on the environment okay so I think uh, that's for the slides okay okay so if you are interested and then you can join our schedule okay if you have uh, questions and then uh, uh, you can uh, send me the question now okay okay if you have any questions any questions anyone okay for me I need to uh, uh, modify the slides before I upload it to the slide share okay so the the slide is available on slide share okay and then uh, the video will be uploaded into uh, YouTube okay I have one question here from Jihya what's the difference between interference and noise okay so noise floor here is minus 94 okay that's very good questions thank you so noise floor is if you do nothing okay so noise this is the definition of or uh, okay I'll try to describe the noise floor so if you do nothing you do nothing okay you don't do anything you do nothing you just listen and then you will listen something so that's called noise floor so sometimes if you have a, a televisions even though uh, you turn off you you put the volume very low up to zero but you still hear something clinging on your head so it's called noise okay so in in this world we have noise okay even though if you don't do anything there is a noise 
so it's a normal noise it's natural noise okay so if our environment has no uh, uh, wireless device around us so usually the noise floor is very very low maybe less than 100 maybe 110 105 100 or uh, yeah 100 but if near us there are several uh, wireless devices they will make some noise okay so that noise floor in this case is minus 94 okay so that's the noise so uh, after that why why we have interference plus noise so as you can see here there's an interference and the noise so we already know the noise and then when we do communications we receive signal and then we also send signal so when we receive signals somebody so in this area for example because our area here is is yeah well it's a little bit crowded so when I receive a signal from my partner over there uh, somebody also I also receive signal from others right so it's called interference so as you can see it's minus 87 so a noise floor is minus 94 so the difference between them is 3 plus 6 so it's minus 9 dBm so that's the interference uh, uh, signal okay so it means that my signal should be above them should be above this interference plus noise so interference plus noise is minus 87 so in order to make a good signal I have to be on top of them okay so my my signal strength should be on top of them for example 20 uh, dBm above that okay so uh, minus 87 that's the interference plus noise so 20 dBm above them could be so plus 87 okay M sorry minus 87 and then add added by 20 equals to 67 okay so 67 dBm so in this case uh, my signal is 63 dBm which means that is good okay so that's the difference between interference and then the noise so conclusion make sure your signal is 20 dB dBm higher than the interference plus noise okay so uh, ubiquity here is good because it also display the interference plus noise not only the noise floor okay so uh, so uh, our base uh, implementation is by seeing this one okay interference plus noise so it's not only noise floor okay any any more questions any questions hello so yeah so uh, yeah for me I need to modify the slides uh, make sure the uh, some parameters here already uh, covered in the basic uh, wireless okay so that when we discuss here uh, the dashboard of the ubiquity uh, you understand what it means Okay, channel width we have discussed it and then uh, yeah some of them we already discussed it okay so next question here 
What's the least signal one should acquire to transmit using Ubiquiti legacy equipment? Well, as I explained in the uh, previous uh, chat, so just make sure the signal is 20 dBm higher than the interference plus noise. So uh, in the old Ubiquiti equipment, uh, they don't have uh, the signal here. They don't have uh, sorry, they don't have the information about interference plus signal. So, uh, old ubiquity, old ROS. Uh, ROS is the operating system that is used, that is installed in uh, ubiquity Airmax. Okay. Uh, in the old ROS, they don't have interference plus noise. So, uh, so but but they you can see the noise floor. Okay. So based in this noise floor, you can. You can, um, well, you can guess. For example, you have to be um, 30 dBm, okay, 30 dBm higher than the noise floor, okay. So make sure I type here. Make sure you have 30 dBm higher than noise floor. Okay, so I'm um, uh, yeah uh, yeah in ubiquity all ubiquity equipments yeah they don't have the information about interference. Okay, so this one is good ROS, the latest ROS. Okay, any more questions? Any more questions? Or everybody is falling to sleep because it is night time here in Indonesia. <laughs> everyone, most everyone is tired because they just finished fasting. <laughs> right, so no questions? Okay, if there is no questions and then I have to close this webinar right okay uh, so please submit your feedback here if you have time you can uh, uh, like our Facebook uh, page you can download slide from SlideShare you can just type uh, GLC webinar and then recording is available on YouTube uh, the URL here is ugly uh, you can just open YouTube and then type GLC Networks and then boom, you can see those uh, 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 recording. Uh, next question here, how do you fight noise from auto frequency by other persons? Yeah, that one is difficult. Yeah, to be honest, it's difficult because it's auto, automatic frequency. We cannot, sometimes you cannot lock the frequency. Okay, sometimes... Uh, you use uh, frequency number one, channel one, and then after one hour, and then change into frequency number two. Yeah, it's uh, it's make your make your um, head uh, ma making headache. <laughs> yeah. So the thing is, I think uh, better if you uh, uh, use uh, static. Uh, Use different frequency, okay? Because yeah, that one is locked by, or you can use old uh, firmware. Yeah, old firmware usually they don't uh, have that uh, auto frequency uh, activated. <laughs> yeah, uh, auto frequency is not good. Yeah, I, I don't really recommend it. So based on my experience, uh, yeah, it's not good. You cannot control it. Okay. Okay, so does that answer questions? So please, so in my suggestion, please use non-auto. Okay. Uh, use or use use old firmware. Or where they don't have where they don't have auto 
frequency. Okay, you are welcome. Looking for Indonesia. Oh, okay. So I have one one uh, message here from Faisal. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, explain the nation in in, in Indonesian. Okay. Uh, secepatnya aja ya. Uh, jadi kalau kalau kita ini ya. Uh, jadi kalau misalkan di sini ya. Uh, sorry guys ya. Yeah, so uh, for those who are cannot cannot understand Indonesia, I'll be speaking Indonesia just for uh, explaining to our uh, uh, guys here because uh, some of them do not really understand English. <laughs> okay, uh, never mind. I will explain again. So uh, intinya adalah kamu harus setting signal kamu itu di atas noise floor. Nah, di ROS, uh, ROS ini ada uh, features untuk menampilkan interferensi, ya. Nah, di ROS yang lain belum ada, ya. Ini feature yang bagus sekali, interferensi. Nah, jadi nanti basis, uh, basis, basis perhitungan signal kita itu adalah di interferensi ini, ya. Di, di interferensi di slide ini adalah minus 87 dBm, ya. Jadi kita mau 20 dBm di atasnya berarti kan minus 67 ya minus 67 dBm. Nah kita dari sana. Jadi noise floor itu nggak cukup ya. Kenapa nggak cukup? Karena ada interferensi. Nah di ROS sebelumnya yang ditanyain ini ini uh, itu tidak ada informasi tentang interference ya di di ROS sebelumnya nggak ada. Nah maka dari itu kita cuma tahunya noise floor ya. Kalau cuma tahunya noise floor kita tambahkan lagi, anggap aja interferensinya 10, kita tambahin langsung 30. Jadi, noise floor misalkan minus 94, di, dikurangin 30 ya, nah, ke atasnya berarti berapa? 64 ya. ya. Jadi, kita harus punya signal minus 64 dB ya. Semakin kecil minusnya, semakin bagus signalnya. Ya, kalau saran saya sih, jangan sampai minus 65 lah, itu signalnya jelek sekali. Oke, okay, begitu ya. Oke, okay, so last question here. Uh, Canon connect AC equipment to Microtik AP? Yeah, it's a very good question. <laughs> uh, that depends. Uh, depends on the uh, protocol. Okay, so wireless is is all about protocol. Okay, so Ubiquiti has their own proprietary protocol that is called uh, Air. Air, I forgot the name, man. Uh, air, air something, okay. Uh, and Microtech has their own uh, protocol, wireless protocol, which is called uh, Nstream and NV2, okay. Yeah, AirMax, okay, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, AirMax, okay, yeah, yeah, thank you. Is that a protocol? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, as long as they, uh, as long as they use the same protocol, they can connect. Yeah, it is possible. So, and in this case, they have to use uh, 802.11. Okay. So here it is possible. So uh, the one that I'm using here, uh, it supports uh, 802.11. Okay. Uh, so I will use this one, Rocket uh, 5AC Lite, as as an access point, and then on the clients, you can use uh, Microtik. Or vice versa, use Microtik and then uh, Ubiquiti as the as the uh, as the client. Okay, uh, but you have to be careful because uh, eight or two eleven has no. It's not TDMA. Okay, so it's not time deficient multiple access. NV two is TDMA. Airmac is TDMA. Uh, yeah, with TDMA is uh, there is no collisions between uh, client because all clients when they access the uh, when they access the 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 what is it when they access the uh, airtime okay when yeah uh, there is no contention okay because every clients already have slot for communications uh, but eight hundred two eleven. Uh, has no that uh, a feature so that 
uh, that could be a contention so uh, you just need to be careful with that but for point to point it is okay because only one client connect to one access point no problem with that so you just uh, need to be careful with the uh, point to multi point uh, topology uh, wireless topology point to point point to multi point wireless topology and then I think for that ones uh, you can apply for example um, bandwidth management from Microtik to make sure that the bandwidth from each client cannot exceed the threshold right so I think that's all uh, already one hour here almost one hour uh, thank you very much for coming uh, uh, thank you very much for uh, keep uh, um, keep attending here until the end of the webinar <laughs> okay so uh, we'll see you uh, in the next week okay uh, if you have any suggestion with the topic you can type it here or send us email or uh, yeah or, or send us message in Facebook or uh, other media, uh, social media. Uh, yeah, uh, again, thank you very much for coming and then uh, see you again in the future.